Welcome everyone. Welcome to the final chapter on the SKW investigation. Inquiry. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, guys. Yes, this has been almost like an investigation. And this is the final phase. And I will disclose what I have understood, what I have discovered related to the OCC copper employed by um, SKW in its cables. So let's take a step backward. What happened? A few weeks ago, a few months maybe, I released a video. Here is a link. You're also going to find all the links in the video description where I presented uh, uh, again, the first step, we could call it, of the SKW case, where I was questioning if they employed or not OCC copper, because as we know, Chinese manufacturers like SKW are always subject to a bias. We There isn't a true certification uh, after that the true Ono continuous cast type of copper was um ceased to be produced by Furukawa in 2013, things changed a lot in the world and a lot of producers started to make their own types or different types or maybe fake types. So that's why a lot of people said, no, Chinese copper isn't OCC, it can't be. It's only like Neotech or other things who have certifications, which I agree. I mean, there is no certification, so you have to believe, you have to trust the manufacturer. So what did I do in that video? I contacted them. They sent me a wealth of documentation showing that it was extremely high purity copper, meaning six N's, six nines, which means 99 slash nine dash nine 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 nine. So it, very pure, extremely pure. Now I forgot something because I'm always talking about OCC copper. I know perfectly what it is, but I uh, forgot one of the main elements. I must admit that OCC copper is not only a matter of purity, like a lot of people in the comments pointed out, thank you for doing that, you are absolutely correct and right. Uh, OCC copper, the main feature is that it is a monocrystal type of copper. Crystals are how the metal is formed, how the metal is shaped. Normal bad copper has a lot of crystals, had a lot of little break breakings, we could call it, in the matrix. Uh, uh, Oxygen-free copper already has a lot less. And OCC copper usually is less than one grain. And that is why, apart from the purity, it's just incredibly conductive and it maintains all the characteristics of the electrical signal passing through. That is the theory. I did an a in-depth video on OCC copper. Here is a link. You'll, you'll understand all the different aspects there and other on the, and also, also the other type of conductors based on uh, copper, and not only, actually. So take a look. It's, it's an interesting video, I think. But apart from this, so a lot of people question after that video asking me, but eh, what about the, the, the monocrystal? What is, was, that's the main aspect. And I said, you're right. And fortunately, I was very lucky because before starting to start to do another inquiry asking the manufacturer because i asked them i asked them so this is occ and they said it is it's six nines it has to be occ it's the only way to obtain that but that's not true and i was carried on a little bit by the excitement of that documentation but once again the purity is one aspect we also have to see if it's monocrystal so i was contacted by professor adrian gerlich i have all the info here he is a PhD, clearly. He is an engineer, a professor at Waterloo uh, University in Canada, Ontario. And he is director of the Center for Advanced Materials Joining, the CAMJ, which is part of the Department of Mechanical and, Megatro and Mechatronics Engineering. So, an expert, I would say a scientist, an academic, who also pointed out this aspect, and offered himself to do tests, analysis, lab analysis, okay? Thorough analysis. So the next thing I did is to buy some SKW cables in order to keep the expense down. I bought some jumpers, 
declared on Amazon Canada. OCC. Now you can see a picture. So that is what they say, what they state everywhere. It's always the same stuff that they do, OCC copper. So I managed to send that to Professor Gerlich, uh, to Adrian, and he took some time. Clearly, it, it, it took a, well, a few weeks to do all the different processing and to better understand if this was or not OCC copper. Are you ready to see the results? Here is a presentation prepared by Adrian. We'll go through it together. Let's go. Okay, guys, so as you can see here, we have the presentation of what took place, how the analysis were conducted by Professor Gerlich with the help of Nazmul Huda as uh, for the lab support. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the package of the jumpers that I sent via Amazon Canada to uh, Waterloo University through the department. So let's see the process, what they did. So they started to open all the different parts. As you can see, detachable gold-plated contacts, heat shrink, tubes to protect connector. Okay, plus there was this warranty info where there is no mention of OCC copper. Hmm. In any case, we'll, we'll comment on that after. Okay, so they started to do the cross-section, the preparation in order to do this type of analysis. So they, they started to cut all the different parts. As you can see, there is this outer braid, the internal white sleeve, uh, probably the PVC as a protection, plus this other red insulation, and a braided uh, conductors with a braid wires in, around it. Here they started to strip the wire, and we can see different types of conductor inside. Uh, the closer inspection reveals there is actually two wire types, a braided copper outer strands and silver foil-like inner strands. So they then at that point cut a few parts and started to uh, practically prepare everything in two directions, as you can see, uh, completely flattening out the, um, the, con the conductors, the wires, cut sections from side and perpendicular orientations with a mountain on resin. Here you can see uh, a few of the machines that were used to do the, these analysis for the mounting and polishing. Specimens were grinded and polished to one micron diamond, then vibratory polished for multiple hours with a colloidal silica. Okay, etching and observation. Polished, polished specimen were then etched with 50% nitric acid and observed with optical microscope to reveal grain structure. And now we're gonna see what they saw. And now here we have the revelation, the cross-section structure. And as we can see, there is this uh, normal, we could say sections of the copper on the outside, uh, braided copper outer strands, plus this silver foil-like that we were talking, inner strands, which are clearly distinguishable and have this very strange arrangement, strange shape, the C shape. Here is a close-up where we can better see the, the, these very thin sections of the copper and how they are, uh, their, their, their shape. Now we're gonna go even closer. These are the outer strands. And as we get closer, we start to see that there are a lot of grains. As you can see, in fine polycrystal grain structure clearly visible. So as you can see, we have a lot of grains, guys, here. There is not a monocrystal situation. And also the inner, the, the, the inside ones, the C-shaped ones, the silver foil-like inner strands also appear to be polycrystalline, he says. These reacted less with the nitric in etchant they may be a different metal than the copper strands. Another etching solution may reveal the grain structure more clearly. So we don't, we're not even sure what are these. And here is a rapid overview on how uh, monocontinuous cast creates a monocrystal and the, the, 
the lookings, the aspects of how it should appear. Since the OCC process produces long continuous grain, we expect only a few grain across the section of wire. If we deform plastically bending or stretching the metal, the grains will be subdivided by dislocations moving through the crystal, reducing the grain size. It would be very difficult to cast a C shape, even if only the central foil conductors were OCC material, and casting those in a flat foil and then bending them would be expected to break up the grains. So, and this is absolutely 100% sure. I mean, you can't move it, you can't bend it because you're not going to be able to cast it and you're not going to be able to bend it. Otherwise, it will break. Green structures appear consistent with conventional OFC copper. So this is the conclusion of Professor Gerlich. Testing effect of deformation on copper. Strands of the copper were deformed repeatedly back and forth to plastically bend them in opposite direction multiple times and compared to original strands. As you can see on the left, as received, and after doing some applying some stress, mechanically, mechanically deformed, you can see what happens. These fine slip bands are formed by dislocation in crystal grains. This confirms the grain structure is observed and accumulating the effect of deformation. This is also why you're not supposed to bend, move too much cables, because this is what happens, unfortunately. The more you fiddle around with cables, the more damage you apply to them. So this was the end of the presentation of Professor Gerlich, who I deeply thank for this information and for taking the time to do this. Really, thank you so much. Very interesting, well done, and very helpful to understand what is going on. Thank you. Okay, guys. So, SKW is not completely transparent on what is taking place inside its cables. Clearly, I mean... The SKW cable that I delivered there to Adrian Gerlich is not, I repeat, not made of OCC copper. Now, we have to say two things, though. First, in the little brochure, as we said, there wasn't reported that it was OCC copper. And that's something they're probably going to hide behind. But it was advertised on Amazon as OCC. You've seen the... Uh, the image okay no question about it it's a jumper maybe they're they're gonna contact me and they're gonna say hey, well, it's a jumper we got confused it's not really OCC as Adrian said it's probably OFC very pure with a decent number of grains but still not OCC absolutely there are com completely different things we must admit so uh what can I say at this point I can say that the cables are absolutely very good. It's, it's a very high quality OFC. I do still stand for the quality clearly, but I also want to disclose this information. I could have easily said, no, nah, nah, it doesn't matter. I don't have time. I don't want to do this. Yes, you're right. It's monocrystal. Goodbye. And I was already safe with that video. But nevertheless, even though I did present their cables in other videos and recommended them, I do want to completely disclose this information that we discovered together with Professor Gerlich. And I think it's something correct to do. Nevertheless, I do want to say that the cables are, are well, I mean, well designed, absolutely high quality materials, and the sound is great. For the price, fantastic. I do stand with that. Nevertheless, I do always never 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 said the opposite i do sense a difference with the neotech cables which i did purchase and i did present in another video here is a link if you're interested there is a difference so i i was attributing that mainly to the design by the geometry of neotech because clearly cables are all different one from the other and as we have seen skw has adopted this strange c uh, type of curve of uh, of the conductors so everyone has different solutions and clearly the sound is affected by that but i guess they are superior the neotech cables are superior also because they employed true occ copper and there we are pretty sure because there is a certification that comes with each cable and in fact the cost is five six times more even even ten times more in in, in, in certain lengths in certain types of cable okay guys I hope we appreciated this uh, investigation, my full disclosure, my honesty. And uh, let's see if SKW replies to this. Thank you again for watching. Please leave your comments here below and let's see what is going to be the next step or if we can 
investigate or analyze other cables. Thank you again for watching and remember that music is born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.